The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, last day of April, April 30th. And uh, pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon. Eastern time, of course. 877-927-6648 is the number to call. Yeah, I'm still waiting for some overseas calls. 727-445-1044 for the overseas call. Free call. <clears throat> Thank you, Steve, for two great hours. And Tuesday today, of course, Options Hour. Always great show in the Options Hour coming up straight after uh, my show at 11. <clears throat> so it'll be at noon. Uh, Eastern Time, then 1 o'clock, you've got Daryl Martin. Don't forget, Daryl and Tom have a great, uh, I know it's great because I just see the work going on all the time. Webinar coming up, a uh, uh, four-hour webinar free, a workshop. Sorry, I didn't mean webinar, I went to workshop. Live, here in the Boston area, Burlington, actually, uh, Route 128, really easy to get to. And that will be on Saturday the f 11th? Saturday the 11th. Uh, whatever, the, no, a week from the Saturday. So sign up. I know it's going to be very full. Uh, uh, let's see. And then, of course, you've got Dave White and um, just another great technician. And, of course, at 4 o'clock till 6 o'clock, great technician Tom O'Brien. So well, let's go straight to the market. The Dow is, <clears throat> after being down about 70-something points, the Dow is down 27 at... Um, 14,791, S&P is down, the cash is down, 134 at 15.92, Comp Index is up 5 at uh, 33.12, um, Gold is uh, was up quite sharply, now it's down about 70 cents at, uh, let me see, it's about 14.66, you got silver at 24.04, uh, down a tad, you got platinum down, you got copper down, wow, 318 and copper, 93.63 on um, crude oil, <clears throat> Bonds are up just a penny, and the dollar is down 45 cents. As the dollar's down, you would think that gold would be a little higher, but gold's had a pretty spectacular move. Let me just check the euro, EUR, USD, currency pair. Yep, there it is. Very nice spring back. Still looking for those higher prices I was discussing. Uh, was it? Yeah, it was Rick from British Columbia. We were spending a little time on it the other day, <clears throat> and I said that, there was, in fact, strength going on. Uh, whether it's able to, let me just do this. Whether it, the moment it goes above 1.32007, and that saw its leg C up in the daily. And that'll, that'll be a very positive thing. Uh, the 120-minute the chart, ABC, pulls back, makes another AB, so that's, D E K. Okay, this is this extension right here is either um, an old leg uh, A B C D E F F or a brand new leg A. That's going to be very interesting. So, uh, medical request in the den. Uh, if I would look at <clears throat> Ford, F is a symbol. Now I have very strict parameters, and I have strict parameters for a number of reasons. One is I have stops and I have entry points <clears throat> and I have exit points and I love to do it pretty much to the penny. <coughs> Excuse me, why? Because the same stops that get us into the trades just beautifully very often are the same stops that save us from any really sharp pullback or a, a, buy, a buy stop that's too high. I don't mind having these tiny stops, 1%, 2%. We took a loss the other day on BIIB at 213, I think it was, whatever it was, for 1%, 1 yeah, 2.20, uh, it was at 220. So uh, two points, I don't mind that. In fact, it saved us because the thing spiked very sharply. Um, so what I, I like to do, uh, was it, sorry, 216. And what I like to do, is to be able to say for my subscribers in my opening call, this is where we want to enter. Now, I had a request in the den from Tucker who wanted to know about the um, Ford, uh, about Ford looking out longer term. I'm going to suggest something here 
that is twofold. But let me just quickly do the analysis. I said to subscribers this morning, we wanted to get into Ford under 13.52. It closed yesterday at 13.57. So under 13.52, my thinking was there is a nine-period moving average support to 13.42. If I get in at about 13.51, I could put in a quite a tight stop, 15 cents, 17 cents. Why? Because this is a very strong leg B with a parallel two-day high at 1376, 1376 on the 26th and uh, the 29th. If we pull back, what I was thinking, and this is shorter term, there is a left side, right side price tie match, which has already been exploited to the upside um, in a kind of a double cup formation to the 1430 level. And now there's another cup formation that would start to break down. You can see my thinking here that I wanted to be correct in my assessment and the price needed to be able to tell me that. And if it broke underneath 13, the stop, would, what did I say the stop would have been? I gave it a 20 cent stop. So if it broke underneath uh, certainly the 13, uh, 26 level where the nine period moving averages of the weekly, that would say, hey, be careful here. This, is, this still needs a little time before it can go higher. So we missed it by one penny. And it's trading now thirteen dollars and sixty six cents. That doesn't sound like much, but in fact it's um, fifty what, uh, fifty one cents high. Uh, not fifty one. It is fifteen cents, sixteen cents higher than uh, what I wanted. So we missed a nice entry point, and it was an entry point. The reason, another reason why I wanted it lower at that particular point, is I wanted the percentage gain to the fourteen thirty level to really be worth the risk that I was taking, even though it was a small 20 cent risk. I wanted at least a dollar and a half, a dollar and a quarter to the upside. In this case, it would have been less than a dollar. So I was really cutting it fine even there. So looks like we've missed it and looks like it's going to go on to a leg C by tomorrow. If this action continues about 1376 today, it extends leg B. If it's tomorrow, it goes to leg C. Okay, so, so that's that. Now the, the longer term, there's a candle in the monthly chart. First of all, the, the weekly has a cup formation in the cup and handle, not cup and ladle, but the cup and handle that says, perchance, if Ford does break the 1430 area, doesn't even have to close above, but if it breaks and goes to like 1443 intra week, 1443 intra week, that would say, wow, that's a cup and, a cup and um, ladle Chapman wave breakout. So I'm a little upset that I, I, I made it so strict. If I was going to give 20 cents, I should have been prepared to go in a fraction higher. Hey, that's the way it is. I'm still not averse to even going in at this particular point. I haven't missed the best opportunity. But knowing that there's a much much uh, less chance of a gain, a strong gain, at this percentage gain at this particular point, and I'll explain why. I think we're getting very close in the daily charts to some kind of a top formation. Now, the weekly charts are mostly in legs, leg D. The Dow will make leg D for breaks to a new recovery high. But what I'm looking at here is a situation that says, if we are rotating in my four Dow horsemen, GE, IBM, Triple M, and UTX, are still not acting as well as they should. In fact, they've been acting quite poorly. Um, I don't want to be overly long, except in certain areas where I think that there could be a rotation to the upside on a pullback. Could Ford move higher if there's a general market decline? And my thinking here is that it could move, initially it could move and then find its feet and then start to move up. But my monthly chart, and this is what I really wanted to get to, daily, weekly, monthly. This is how you need to do it. See the, the cup formation here in the weekly, in the middle chart? Let me just get there. Now, what I'm looking at is Ford monthly. The candle that was formed, um, the inverted candle of, the, of January of this year with a high of 1430. If that is taken out in the monthly chart, and it can't be done, uh, I shouldn't say it can't be done, it probably won't be done today but and then next uh, tomorrow starts the next month that says it doesn't really matter which month i would, would have preferred it in april but if it's in may 
is a little different because a conscious candle above 1430, it really needs to climb and it get, needs to get into the Roman candle of June of 2011 and go above the high of 1490. So my longer term outlook for Ford is we might travel sideways a little bit. Going sideways is not ideal. It really needs to move quicker. So Tucker, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to remember at the outset I said I'm going to have two scenarios. The one scenario is that you grab Ford right here at 1366. Not the greatest entrance in terms of where we are in daily charts, if we're getting close to some kind of a pullback. But what it says is, if there's a rotation, and for whatever reason, I don't care what it is, if for whatever, re whatever reason, Ford starts to garner strength enough to take it in the next week and a half above uh, uh, 1390 into the touch 1398, uh, 1410, somewhere around there, then you already have yourself a position that says, great, I can either take some profit and I can add to it on a decline or I can just let it ride with a trading stop. I'm in a comfortable position on a part of my position. This is now I've got room to start looking at the greater picture and it might take until end of May, beginning of June, I'm not sure, before you get your next position. So here's my, my answer. Part one is start a position right here, 1366, 1367. They can have a, a smallish, a smallish position. You know, reason not too small, not too big. Just a position, and that should have a stop of about 13.38, maybe 13.33. I don't think a 30 cent stop on a sole position, a starter position on a position that you'd like to probably extend and expand later on. And if it breaks above 13. 79 to 1383 that means you're in the right position it's a good position and I would even say to you at that point on any little pullback you could in fact start another position and that new position becomes a trading position with a target of 1428 to 1433 now you've got your core position at 13 uh, sort of a core position at 1367 you've added to it and all I would do is I'll have trading stop, a trading stop on the latest position that you have at about, say, what else? I think it was 1387, something like that. So that's my thinking. Now, looking at the, the monthly chart, the stochastics at 77%. If it was at 80%, I'd have absolutely no compulsion but to say to you, start a position here and add to it under certain conditions. It isn't quite there. It's a 77. It's not at 80 percent, but the MACD is improving. Price is improving. It's bounce of the nine EMA, and that's why I say start a position, and that could become a core position if you want to add to it, but still fairly small, because I need to see how the next week, maybe I, I'd call it the next seven to eight trading days, goes with forward, and that's going to tell me a tremendous amount. I think about the next two months. So it's worth it. So I hope that helps you. Got another question in the den, but I've got a bunch of callers. We'll be back. Whoa, look at that. With Dan, Paul, Mike, and Mark straight after this break. Yeah, Paul, Mike, and Mark. Yes. Straight after this break. Uh, Basil Trap and Tank Conditions are Dow's only down 30, SB's down $1.60. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, everyone. We are back. Basil Chapman down to 27. S&P's down to $1.56. And we're going to go to our first caller, Danny Miami. Hi, Dan. How are you? Hi, Basil. How are you doing? Very well. Thank you. I got a question about the dollar and ES. I got the ES on a weekly daily. The high was 1597 on 412, and the same on a weekly. And the dollar has a higher high. The DX has a higher high on last July. And uh, 412, the week of 45 this 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 year. Uh, right. So like 83.5 and uh, 83.49, right? Off. Now, I got it breaking both on the weekly, both below the 200, far below the 200 now, and it looks like it's going through the 50-day average. Uh, wait, are you, 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 you're using the simple moving average for the 200. Is that correct? I believe so, because my, my, mine is exponential, which I rely on a lot more, and that is at 81.09, and the dollar index right now is 81.63. So, uh, I got it by 8168 ish Okay, anyone. So I, I think you're using, you, I think you're using the um, SMA rather than the, what I use, the EMA. But it doesn't matter. It's they're very close. It's just a, usually it's within a point. Now look at this. There is a pattern. There's a higher to, high, like I like I stated before in July last year. The higher high of eighty four five. Correct. In a monthly chart that was at eighty uh, eighty four. Weekly. Oh, you're looking at the weekly. All right. Well, the monthly should be the same thing. So the weekly, let me just move it over here. What I'm looking at is this. The dollar, this is really interesting. Uh, 
the power in, in my Chapman Wave methodology, I just want to show this now. I just happened to grab it purely by oh, coincidence, just to show my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology. Right in the very beginning, out of 476 slides, right there on, on slide 13, it says synopsis of the process, and it says from the most identifiable low bar, a buy signal goes to a buy mode and should take the price to at least four higher peaks. It is possible to go higher, but look at this. The dollar has gone from the low of 72.70 in the weekly chart that was back in the week of the 5th, uh, 6th of May of, of 2011. It went to peak A, B, C, D, and then within a, just a couple, of bar, a couple of weeks, it just popped up slightly to a peak E. That's the fifth highest peak at 81.78. Pulls back, and then it goes again. Peak A, B, C, and right there, peak D, the fourth highest peak at 84.10. The week of the 27th of July of last year. Then what does it do? It pulls back to 78.60, uh, an eight-point pull, a, uh, what is it? Yeah, a six-point pullback. And then what does it do? It goes to another peak D, and now it's turning down. The weekly chart, the MACD has not yet crossed negative, but the daily has gone to 76%, very much like the other times it's pulled back. Now, it's really important about this. Today's only Tuesday, so it's very early in the week to talk about it as a weekly chart, but I can tell you this. It's at 81.65. If the dollar closes underneath 81.72, that was the low of the week of the 19th, that's going to be negative, and it's going to say there's a chance that while the gold rallies a little further to the upside, the dollar's going to pull back, and the euro goes to that leg C I was talking about a moment ago. The dollar will go to between 80.20 and 79.90. 80.08 is my 200-period exponential moving average right there. Now, with the big thing about the dollar is this. If we are to see a sell in May and go away, I don't believe we're going to see a sell in May and go away. I think we are going to see some kind of a sharp pullback in May. I don't believe it's a go away at all. Not not the work that I'm looking at right now. I could be wrong and I could change my mind. But my the monthly chart will say that that whole 81, it's at 8167, the whole 81 to maybe 80 area, somewhere around there, could that's just another uh, a point or so away. That's going to be very critical because if the dollar starts to sl slide sharply and go to 78.92, that'll actually allow a little bit more strength in, in some of the commodities, but it'll also say that perhaps the stock market will be benefiting uh, in that particular time. So I'm watching this real closely. You don't have a position. You're watching it closely, though, or do you have a position? I'm just using the, you know, the ES. So now when you're no, looking at No, no, I don't have a position, no. You don't. Okay. So if you're using it, this is what I'm going to recommend to you. Put the dollar together with your index, whatever technical indicators you're using, together with the VIX index. Uh, do you ever use the VIX index? All the time, yeah. All the time. Good. So what I'm going to recommend is if the VIX, if the dollar, let's see, if the dollar turns, finds support in the next week and starts to climb, and it pushes up about a point and a half from where it is now, and the volatility index, which is at 13.93, climbs over 16.30, we've started some kind of a market correction. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna say to you, keep your eye on it. I don't think I'd be using it for anything yet, but you're getting real close, so I hope that helps you. Yeah. Thank you, Dan, thanks for calling. We'll be back with Paul, Mike, and Mark, and Chris straight after this. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit. And on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customer capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. We're going to go to our next corner. We've got Paul in Claremont, Florida. Hi, Paul. How are you? Whoops. Hi, Paul. You there? Oh, after waiting all that time, did we just lose Paul? Um, well, I'm going to do this. I, let's see, Paul wants to ask, okay, Paul wants to ask about MPEL. Uh, actually, I needed to know whether he, what position he was in. Um, uh, Paul, if you want to call back, uh, I'll squeeze you in. Uh, don't worry, uh, but I'm still going to do it. MPEL, Melco Crown Entertainment Limited Casinos, and I, I, I discussed this as still looking pretty darn good. And I like the fact that it's in leg C in the daily um, weekly is in leg E, but looking very strong. Monthly is still long, strong in leg D. And since we spoke, it's gone above that left side high, which is very important, that the all-time high, which was the opening um, month of December of 2006, opened at 22, went to 2355. Where are we now? 2467. If you are still long, I think we said, said start a tiny position because it was good. It's, I'm almost sure I said that. Stay long. And uh, are you there? Hello. Yes. Hi, Paul. Are you? How are you? Doing? you uh, how, what, what's your position in in, um, in Melka Crown Entertainment? I'm getting ready to say goodbye to it very soon. So you're long, and <laughs> yeah, you okay. are just getting ready. Can I make a suggestion here that you just might yeah. want to consider? I would not rush to sell it. I would rather be taken out, and that would be in a small <laughs> position. I think you've done fabulously up till now, but the MACD at 91%, uh, the MACD very strong, the stochastic at 91% says that it's in leg C, 
it should go to at least leg D. So Wait, what I, I would do is on part, on part of my position, <clears throat> when you get to the next peak in the daily chart, that means let's just say tomorrow, instead of being yeah. 2493, imagine 2493 is today's high. Tomorrow the high is only 2492. And it takes either one day or two days to pull back, and then it spikes above to start leg D. What I would do is on some part of your position in leg D, I would raise the stop. I'd raise the stop on that on some part of at least say half the position, whatever you were going to get out of, get out of some part of it by raising the stop. A B C D, A B C D. This is the second buy buy signal and buy mode in the 120 minute chart. I do see some kind of a pullback, but it should theoretically, if it's going to go to D, which it normally does, I would say once it goes above, if the high today is peak C. Once it starts going above that, raise the stop in some part of your position quite tightly. So I that don't have it, a stop. I've got a, I've got a sell order in it, but I'm waiting for another buck and a half. I, I, oh, well, if, that, if, that if kind you, of if you work this out. If you work this out according to, like, you know, you know you're familiar with Bud's PTS? Yep. Well, on a, on a weekly, this looks like it can go to 26 and a quarter right now. Oh, so you've got you've got the threes are your 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 ranges three. Uh, no, the ranges are, ranges about 275 with about a buck 38 and a half. Okay, all right, very good. And well, it, I, it works out kind of just like what you you were saying Friday with the caller or on or what you're projecting it to go to there. Okay, very good. So and this now, is my here's two more factors, Basil. One. Uh, one Sands is announcing earnings tomorrow night, and Macau okay. is doing fantastic. So that's that's going to push it higher. Okay. And the next day after the Labor Day holiday in Macau, the April numbers are going to come out for Macau, and they're going to be—I mean, the March numbers. No, what are we in March? A April numbers will come out, and that th those are, they already know those are blowout numbers. Then next week on the set, on the eighth, MPEL reports earnings, but I'm I'm going to be out before that though. Well, you know what? I think you've got a great strategy. You've got it exactly in your mind. You've got it really well worked out. All I'm going to say to you is you're expecting a buck and a half. If it misses to get to the 25, 25, or 25, 50 right. area, mm -hmm. then it's going to tell you right away it's a good time to either exit because you've got right. exactly you've got your target. You don't have to wait exactly, but I think you're perfectly just, correct. Just I was thinking, too. What I wanted to also what what I wanted to just say to you is, if you can keep just a small position, almost as an experiment, because there is nothing yet wrong with the chart. No, I know. It looks like it's, go, it's, it's making its way to 29, but you've got to remember, Basil, this is a psycho stock. You it go, is. go back in history. It's crazy. I've been, Actually, I've been no, wiped no, no. out twice in this already. In oh, okay. Well, I don't want, I'm not going to argue with that. All I can say is if you had a look at the chart right now, it's a psycho stock when it gets to peak E in the weekly. <laughs> it's in leg E, so I agree with you. So, hey, great trading, great plan, and let me know how it works out. I will. Thank you, Basil. Thank you for calling, Paul. Let's go to Mike in New York. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good, Basil. Um, I'm short Baidu right now. Uh, how would you handle that position? What I would do is this. Baidu has had no strength whatsoever. If there is going to be any strength, it's just going to be from a sudden announcement that comes, you know, one of those things that we have no control over. I think you're absolutely correct in your position. It can't close above the nine period moving. It hasn't yet on any weekly basis closed. Uh, it just touched the nine EMA once in the weekly on the week of the 12th of April. It managed to close close to just a fraction above the nine EMA since the first time since it broke down back in um, the week of the 8th of February of this year, back up in the 105 area. So all I'm going to say to you is I like that position. There is a lot of evidence to say that it's coming into a congestion support area, which doesn't say it can rally. It just says that it might at this point take a little longer before it does what you would like, and that's to see it. Baidu, B-I-D-U, is trading at 86. What you really would like to see is a break, a, just a sudden Break underneath 83.89. That was the low of uh, the 26th of April because immediately the target would be the low of 82.98 back on the 5th of April. And if it does get there, my recommendation, I think we've discussed this before, is to take something off in that area because that's where you could have a bit of a bigger bounce in time and price. But that will be my target. Now, what I would say to you is this. 
the candle that was a moment of scariness just yesterday when it was up at 88.07, but today it's not finding that kind of strength yet. So what I would say to you is, in the longer term, I think you're going to be, your objective is to push this to the downside on the short position with a longer term perspective that says there should be a trade somewhere in the 78 to 74 area in the next six to eight weeks. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it. In the meantime, there could be bounces, and how you handle the bounces is going to be very important. What I would say to you is that if it starts to get to 87, 18, there's a chance that it wants to try to fill the gap from yesterday. So I don't know if you want to mess around uh, by covering and then going back in again. I would just say that I would not... I would want to add to it if there was a bounce to the 87.60 to the 89.10-ish area that starts to make an arch formation and come down again. Then I would want to add to it, but I wouldn't add to it just yet. I want to see if it can break, if it'll break. And I'll tell you something, that if it gets to 84.65, that's probably where I'd want to add just a little bit more as a, a trading position with a target of from 84. 65, 75, down to the 83, uh, so the 83, 10, 82, 98 low of the uh, 5th of April. So I hope that helps you. I think you're in the right position. It's okay. just not, it, you haven't got the speed because it's already formed a base area. It needs to break that base and go into the 82s for you to really be comfortable. Yeah. Hope that helps you. Thanks yeah. for calling, Mike. Good eye. Let's go to Mark in Fort Collins. Hi, Mark. How are you? How are you? Good, thank you. Good. Well, um, I wanted you to look at GDX. I got out of a bunch of gold positions yesterday, and then uh, it was very timely, including some Newmont calls. Um, and then uh, everything kind of has fallen apart a little bit more today, but I'm, I just was looking at taking a position in the GDX. Wondering what you know, thought, making a, does that made already made a daily B and you're looking for it to go any it's higher? It's made a peak B and this pullback is just a tad more than I would like to see because it went underneath the low of 29.24. Folks, we're looking at GDXs, the gold miners uh, vectors, I believe, vectors, gold miners, ETF. Now, this is what I'm looking at. The candle that was formed at the low on the weekly chart on the week of the 19th, that's three weeks ago, that's saying that there should be further gains to be made, but it's not speed and price. It's just a steady move to the upside until it comes back and retests. But the GDX, that's more like the GLD, because the GLD, you'll see, has made a high-level consolidation at peak B. So I'm not sure I would want to be in the GDX. I would rather sacrifice something. In my, in my, in my trader's corner, I have something that is comparable to the GDX, uh, to the GLD, it trades at one tenth the price of the GLD and does exactly the same. It's way lower cost, and I like it better. I have a, we, I've got a price to buy it. It hasn't come down to that price, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. So I'm a little cautious here on the GDX. I'm going to recommend something here. If you're within like a real close 15 cents or 20 cents in your GDX, I'm going to suggest maybe you you don't trade the GDX. Okay. I don't think that the, the uh, in fact, the gold stocks are absolutely independent. They are, some are looking great, some are looking, you can, I don't have to tell you, you can see some are holding beautifully and some are just horrible. And that's exactly why I would prefer to trade, if I think gold is going up, I want to trade gold. So I would stick with that. So I hope that helps you. I don't, I, I, I don't think I, yeah, the GLD is one-tenth the price of gold. I have in my opening call an ETF, which is one tenth the price of the GLD. So that's the one that I would prefer because I think that that just a risk reward, and it it doesn't matter about the stocks. I want the gold price to go up, and that'll move with the gold price. I hope that helps you. Yeah, it does. And if you have time later, will you look at the um, XLY, which is the consumer, uh, the consumer. Uh... All right, I'm going to make a note now. I've got one more call, and then I'll look at the XLY. Okay, thanks so much for calling, Mark. Thanks for that. Okay, let's go to Chris in uh, San Antonio, and we've got Chris. How are you? I'm doing good, Basil. Uh, I noticed this morning that you mentioned that uh, that uh, Biogen could go to a 225 round number high, and I went ahead and shorted it right there at that point. 
And the, the reason I sorted it is because there's two humongous gaps down below it, and that's what I was trying to play is trying to get those gaps filled. And I just wanted to say, what do you think about that? Okay. Folks, BIIB is Biogen, IDEC, Biopharma. just been an incredible stock. The monthly chart is gone. It's, it has not closed underneath the nine period moving in the monthly chart. Folks, learn these techniques. Just uh, the, I have a webinar on, on the moving averages. Try to get to that because, really, I, I think it would help you. From the moment it broke out in the week of the 30th of July in 2010, it has gone straight up. And not only has it gone straight up, the BIIB, a Biogen Biopharma, hasn't closed once underneath the uh, nine-period moving average. So the monthly chart is spectacular. But to be able to get some kind of sell signals, you need to start into smaller time frames. Well, the weekly is making a leg D, and it'll be a peak D if there's no new high above the high of today, 226.18. That's number one. Number two, the MACD is still very strong at 93%. Oh, the MACD is very strong. The stochastic is very strong at 93%. But I have other indicators to say, be careful. It's getting a little bit toppy right here. So now we go to the daily chart. The daily chart, and I can't believe how many people have either bought puts or um, have shorted it based on the analysis yesterday. And what I like to look at, we've had, we had a round number 225 high of yesterday. What can sometimes happen if you if you understand round numbers and how they work is that occasionally what you get is the round number either at the open, at the high, at the low, or the close, and yet it's the next day with a slightly higher high that is the day of the turn. And I think, I'm saying I think, that everything here is pointing to that factor and that the high of 20... 20 226.18 today will be a peak. I, I, I have to at this point think that it's going to be a peak F top if a Biogen IDEC gets anywhere into the 217 to 214 area um, by Thursday afternoon or Friday morning. Because what will happen is 213.07 is the nine period moving average in the, in the daily, which also has been spectacular. In fact, it's very seldom you get a stock that since it broke above, Back on the 27th of February at 167.23, only once has closed underneath that incredible uh, moving average, the 9 EMA. But the MACD is still good, and the stochastic is at 83%. So I love the fact that it's already working for you. This is what, And now I did a study, and I showed my subscribers this morning, that there's a trend line, a rising trend line. And, in fact... Uh, um, this has, let me go back. If you go back to, let's see, I'm going to go back to the low of, I think I did this yesterday, of 139.72 back on the 15th of January. There have been peak E's and F's all the way, and every one has resulted in a pretty decent pullback. So I'm looking at this once again, gone to, uh, instead of an E, it's gone one extra to the F. The stochastic in the in the 120 minute chart is turning down. It's at 81 percent. The MACD hasn't crossed negative, but it shows signs of doing that. I think you've got yourself a great entry point, but I wouldn't get greedy. I do what one of one of our Den members has done. He's already taken something off in the uh, in his puts, and he's keeping some on. So he's taken quick gain and he's going to hold the other. So if you want to hold on, I'll tell you what the risk would be on the, on the upside, because you have, you have puts, right, or you're short? I'm short. You're short. Okay, if you're short, there's a different perspective. So I'll be right back. Dow's down 8, S&P's up 84 cents. I'll be right back. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed down a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Bessel Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Bessel's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Bessel's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN.
Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar, bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So I just want to finish up because this is a little different to the puts, which are further out. What I would say is, um, Chris, if you're, if you're short um, BIIB, I don't know if you're able to separate it into little packages because if you're a flat one position, and that's all you want to trade, that's one thing. But I think of it as two positions. And the one position would have a stop, a buy stop, that is. Um, the high today is 226.18. Even if it had to rally, the way I'm looking at this, I don't think it's going to go much higher than 227 to 229. Well, stocks like this don't usually just end uh, their their uh, their performance on the upside with just kind of a nominal high. They have the kind of spectacular high that's not just stair step, but each move is just really sharp to the upside, squeezing every short out. I suspect at this particular point, you're fresh to the short on BIB, but the folks who've been doing it for a while, they have just had it. They they are done with the stock. That's what you want because what it does, it gives a limit to the upside now between. I'd say 227, maybe two, maybe 231. Um, so if you were shorting at the 225 area, I think a six to an eight point. I don't know what you have, but on some part of the position, a six to eight point buy stop. I think that that's reasonable. I don't know well, if I go. Actually, I, I, right now my, my buy stop is 225. Is that? Too, is that? Uh, I just well, what I want to do. Yeah, you see, now that it's gone to 219, the round number kicks in. And that round number says that if it closes above 225, 
there's a chance that it could go slightly higher, but the moment it goes back under 223 or 222, that's its final gasp. That's the way the 225 round number should act. So that's why I'm saying to you that if you can think of two positions, the one position could have the 225 as a buy stop. The other, you could make it 225 or even just a tad higher, like 226.18 was the high today. You know, three points, I don't think it should make that much difference. Why? Because we're looking at the potential for a stock to drop quickly to 213. If it breaks 213, 210 to 208 would be the area. 209 really would be the area that I would target. And at that point, I would just tighten up stops because that is a the, one of the biggest moves down that it's had on a percentage and a point basis. And it should be ready for a bounce to make maybe the right shoulder failure. So that's what I just wanted to say to you. Thinking two positions... One could have the 225 as a buy stop, but actually the 225 one, I would lower it now. I'd use a, a trading stop of maybe four points, so 223, and the other one I would put a little bit higher. Do you understand what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to yeah. keep you in the position as long as possible for any whipsaw. Your target is, if I'm correct and it makes a peak D next week, that the following week, it starts, even with the counter trend bounce and all that doesn't even come close to where you shorted it at, that you are looking at a situation where it starts to make lower highs and lower lows, which is not done for a long time. That's really what you want. So I hope that helps okay. you. Hey, Beth, one other question. Uh, if you look at this, if you look at uh, Biogen on a 10-year monthly chart, yes, this thing hasn't had any volume since 2011. How can this thing possibly go straight up on no volume? Because uh, I have a different way of looking at it. You know, I, I've looked at this. I've done this for so long. I've just, I used to do on-balance volume. That's how I got into this whole thing, technical analysis, Joe Granville's on-balance volume, until I found that some stocks go up with, without volume. Some stocks do it with volume. Some stocks build up volume. And then they go, some stocks build up volume, and they never go. I just, I got confused. I use on-balance volume. My on-balance volume says to me, we're at a point here where it's become, it's going to become more difficult for it to go higher, and that I'm becoming a little bit overbought, somewhat overbought on a technical basis. I'll talk, maybe I'll talk about it a little bit more tomorrow. I'll do a little bit on, on what, how I treat volume tomorrow in the show. So thanks so much okay, for calling, Chris. Bad. Thank you. Uh, stay tuned, folks. Got the options hour coming up. Always a fabulous show. And I will be back tomorrow. Think about opening call. Go on the front page of TNN. Take it out.